So how do we expand and condense logarithms, sometimes often referred to as logs? Well, we're gonna use these properties over here and we're gonna go through 11 examples together. Some where we're expanding, some where we're condensing, and I'll give you some tips along the way. So what you wanna think about here is when you're multiplying, see the log base B of X times Y, you can expand it, meaning making it larger here, by writing as the sum of two logs. So log base B of X plus log base B of Y. When you're dividing, you write it as the difference. So log base B of the numerator minus log base B of the denominator. And then when you have log base B of X to the nth power, you can bring that N down in front and say N times log base B of X. Now you might remember the uh, properties of exponents. Remember when we multiplied, what did we do to the exponents? We added. See how these are multiplied and we're adding? So there's some similarities there. If we divide, what do we do to the exponents? We subtract, right? So you can see we're dividing. What are we doing? We're subtracting the logarithms. And if we have a power to a power, what do we do to the exponents? We multiply them. And you can see here when we bring down this n, what are we doing? We're multiplying n times log of x. So let's dive into some examples here. First, starting with expanding. If we want to expand log base uh, 3 of xy divided by z, how would we do that? Well, you can see the X and the Y are right next to each other. That means they're multiplied together. And when we multiply, we can write this as the sum. So log base three of X plus log base three of Y. And then we're dividing by Z. When we divide, we subtract. So minus log base three of Z. And that's fully expanded. Let's look at another example, number two now. Log base four of the product of X squared times Y cubed. So how would we do that one? Now, some students are really good at doing this all in one step, but you might want to break it down into smaller steps. So what I mean by that is we can see the x squared and the y cubed, you know, they're side by side, they're next to each other. That means they're multiplied together. And when we multiply from this first one here, we can see that we write it as a sum of two logs. Now remember to keep that base the same. So if we're dealing with base four, notice these logs both have base four. But then what we can do, we can see this power property here. We can bring that exponent down in front and multiply it by that logarithm. So I'm gonna bring these powers down in front. So this is gonna be two log base four of X plus three log base four of Y, and that's fully expanded. Now, as you get better at these, you can do them all in one step if you want, but it doesn't hurt to break it down into smaller steps. Number three, we've got log base five of the square root of X cubed Y. Now, when you think of the square root, you can think of this as the one half power. So if you remember your rational exponents, your fractional exponents, this is really like x cubed y to the one half power instead of the square root. If it was the fourth root, it'd be the one fourth power. If it was the tenth root, it'd be the one tenth power. That root or index goes in the denominator of the fraction. But remember when we have a power to a power, we can multiply these together. So I could write this as log base five of x cubed, oh, I'm sorry, x to the 3 halves times y to the 1 half. I'm just power to power or multiplying those exponents. Now I can see the x cubed and the y to the 1 half are right next to each other. They're multiplied together. So using our product property here, we can write it as the sum of two logs. So we're going to write this as uh, log base 5 of x to the 3 halves power plus log base 5 of y to the 1 half power. Now using our power property, we can bring that power, that exponent down in front. So that three halves is gonna come in front. This one half is gonna come in front of the log. So our final result here is gonna look like three halves log base five of X plus one half log base five of Y. And that's fully expanded. Now in some of the later examples, we're gonna get into the condensing, but what you can do, you could reverse those steps to condense it back. When you go from the left to the right, it's expanding. When you go from the right to the left here, it's getting smaller, you're condensing it into just one log. Let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do a few more expanding and then we'll do the condensing ones. Okay, for number four now, we've got log base six of X divided by the quantity Y squared times Z cubed. How would we do that one? Now, let me see if I can show you here. We're dividing, so what do we do when we divide? Well, we know that we have to subtract. So I'm gonna say log base, uh, six of X minus log base six of Y squared Z cubed. And then you can see that Y squared and Z cubed are multiplied together. So that's our product uh, property here. So we're gonna have to write this as a sum. So we're gonna say log base six 
of y squared plus log base six of z cubed. Now here's where students go a little bit off track. When you're subtracting, see you're really subtracting this whole group, right? So this whole thing is subtracted. And we'll just bring down the log base six of x. So what we have to do is we're gonna have to distribute this negative into the parentheses. We know that we can bring down these exponents as coefficients, that's our power property of logs. But remember, distributing that negative is gonna give us negative two log base six of y minus three log base six of z and log base six of x out here in front. Now, once you get the hang of this or a feel for this, you're gonna realize that anything that's in the denominator, those logarithms are gonna be subtracted. Anything that's in the numerator, those logarithms are gonna be positive or added. So you can skip some steps uh, by not having to do this distributive property by realizing that fact. Let's look at number five. This will illustrate it a little bit more clearly. See how we have log base seven? And notice we're multiplying x times y times z. Those are in the numerator. So this is gonna be log base seven of x plus log base seven of y plus log base seven of z. Notice RSTU are in the denominator. So we're gonna say minus log base seven of r minus log base seven of s, minus log base seven of t, minus log base seven of u. So really simple, if you just remember, whatever's in the numerator, those logs are added or positive. The arguments that here are in the denominator are gonna be subtracted or negative. Let's look at number six now. This one, we've got a radical here, uh, cube root, log base eight. So let's see, how do we expand this? Well, we've got log base eight, of x squared times y plus two to the one third power. Remember the cube root is the one third power. So we're gonna power to power, we're gonna multiply these exponents, kind of rewrite it, if you will. And that would be x to the two thirds, y plus two to the one third. Now notice that these are next to each other. That means they're multiplied together. And we know when uh, they're multiplied, we write it as a sum. So we could write this as log base eight, of x to the two thirds plus log base eight of y plus two to the one third. Now all we have to do is use our power property of logs and bring that power, that exponent, down in front of the log. So our final result, if you're trying this at home, would be log base eight, two thirds, log base eight of x plus one third uh, log base eight of the quantity y plus two and that's fully expanded. So let's take a look at some condensing ones now. Okay, so now for condensing, number seven, log base nine of x plus log base nine of y minus log base nine of z. Notice these logs are added together. So if we condense, you can see the arguments are gonna be multiplied. So we're gonna have log base nine of x times y, and then we're subtracting log base nine of z. Now when we subtract, we divide. Whatever is being subtracted, that argument is gonna go in the denominator, and that's fully condensed. We condense it into one log. Now, sometimes students make a little mistake. They'll start like multiplying the logs together. They'll say log base nine of x times log base nine of y, and then divided by log base nine of z. Or when they divide, they'll divide the log as well. You just wanna divide the arguments, not, not the logarithm. Okay, so let's look at number eight. So this one, you can see that we can bring up these coefficients as powers, right? So I can make this x squared and y cubed. That's this power property here. I'm just bringing this uh, coefficient up as a power. Then when we're subtracting, we know from this quotient property of logarithms, we are going here from the right to the left, we're gonna be dividing. So this is gonna be log, uh, and notice we don't have a base, which means it's understood to be a common logarithm or base 10. And this is gonna be log of x squared divided by y cubed and that's fully condensed. Now, if you wanna check your work, try expanding it. So, you know, you could say, oh, I'm dividing, so I'm gonna subtract, then I'm gonna bring the powers down in front as coefficients, that's our power property, and you'll get back the original question, right? So for number nine, now we're switching gears to natural log, ln. Remember, natural log is log base e. So let's write that down, log base e of x. Just like when you see log, this is really log base 10 of x, that's our common logarithm. So we're condensing, now remember the coefficient can come up as a power, that's our power property. 
and then we're subtracting. Now remember when you subtract, all the logs or natural logs that are being subtracted, those arguments are going to go in the denominator. All the ones that are added, those arguments are going to go in the numerator. So this is going to look like natural log of x to the fourth divided by y to the fifth times z to the sixth. And that's fully condensed. Now again, remember don't divide the natural log, just the argument. And again, if you want to check your work, go ahead and reverse it and expand it. For number 10 now, let's see, what can we do here? Well here, you know what I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to distribute the 1 half in first. So that's going to be 3 halves natural log of x plus 7 halves natural log of y. That's one option. Or let's do it this other way. Let's bring up the 3 and the 7. So that's going to give us natural log of x cubed plus natural log of y to the 7th. And that whole thing is to the 1 half power. Let's do it like that. So this will be natural log of x cubed times y to the 7th, because remember when you add, you write it as a product. And then what happens to this 1 half here? Well, the 1 half can come up as a power using our power property, but what does the 1 half represent? The 1 half is actually the square root. So we could write this as the square root like that. Now if I was going to go down this route here, when I bring up the 3 halves and the 7 halves, I could write it just as like natural log of x to the 3 halves times y to the 7 halves, and that would be fine too. These are equivalent, so either way would be, be okay. This is a little bit kind of neater, I guess. And then for number 11, how could we condense this one? Well, we can bring up the coefficient. Notice I always do the kind of the power property first. I try to bring up the coefficients as exponents first. So this is going to come out to uh, log base 2 of x to the 1 3rd, which remember the 1 3rd is like the cube root. And this is going to come out to log base 2 of y to the 6, because when I bring up that 3, we multiply those exponents together, power to power we times. Now we're adding, and we know when we add, we multiply. So the final result here is going to be log base 2. Remember, you want to make sure the bases are the same, keep that base. And we're multiplying, so this is going to be the cube root of x times y to the 6, or I could put the y to the 6 in front here so it doesn't look like it's under the cube root. And sometimes if there's more than one thing here, I sometimes put it in parentheses just so I can see that it, like it's log of that whole quantity. So great job if you're able to follow these 11 examples. If you want more practice or you want to test yourself, which I recommend you get some practice and kind of test yourself, follow me over to that video I did there talking more about expanding and condensing logarithms. I'll see you over in that video.